Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax Garage. Today, we're gonna go over the 100 plus modifications I've done to my travel trailer. So let's jump right into it. All right guys, bear with me. This video is gonna be a bit longer than usual, but it is going to have a lot of information. Now I understand a lot of you won't do 100 plus modifications to a travel trailer, but I'm sure you will learn something and maybe one or two or 10 of these upgrades you will enjoy. So stick around, watch the whole thing. I'm gonna start on the front, work my way around the trailer. Then we're gonna jump Jump inside and I'll go over the inside. So everything I mentioned in this video I will have a link down below where you can actually find these products. If you want them they will be categorized as far as exterior, interior and then I'm going to make more videos in detail later on in the, the coming weeks about specific upgrades and how I did them. But let's jump off with the first upgrade. I bought this hitch lock. It's a very beefy one. Make sure you spend your money on a hitch lock. It's protecting your travel trailer. Moving on back I upgraded my chain to these cables because they coil up and they look a bit nicer. When you go up to uh, the tongue jack here, I got this tongue jack cover. Firstly, it keeps all the electronics nice and dry and it also gives you a place for your cable and your chains. Next up, you'll see I have this different auxiliary wire here. Now this auxiliary wire, I can plug into my actual SUV or my truck and it charges my four lithium ion batteries if I'm traveling on a day where there's no sun. So that's what that is. If you look down at the tongue jack, I have a quick jack tongue jack. This just saves you about eight inches of holding the button. Um, it, it flops down and folds up. It, it's a great accessory so you don't sit here all day holding this button for that tongue jack to come down. Moving on back, I have upgraded the 20 pound propane tanks to 30 pound pro propane tanks. I do a lot of winter camping. That's actually when I camp. I do not camp in the summer because I'm a boater. So I upgraded these because you use a lot of propane. On top of that, I actually moved them forward about six inches. And the reason for that is this is where I store my 2000 watt uh, inverted generator. Great location for it. So I absolutely love it. Coming over to this side, you will see I have upgraded the trailer breakaway cable as well. This is a metal cable, but it does coil up to keep things nice and tidy. Right behind there, you will see there's a blue little box here. This is my wireless TPMS sensor, tire pressure monitor. If you travel a lot with your travel trailer, you're going to want to monitor your tire pressure all the time when you're traveling. So this one actually keeps the, gives you the temperature of the tire and the PSI and you can monitor it in your car. You'll also see I have a weight distribution hitch mount. I went with the equalizer rate weight distribution mount and so far all good. Let's jump over to the other side and show you something unique. So here is my equalizer hitch, but attached to the equalizer hitch is something called the shocker hitch. Now what I've done with the shocker hitch is, well, you can buy this. It is an airbag uh, suspension that keeps the bounce of the travel trailer and the SUV that, uh, you know, wave-like feeling away and it, it actually absorbs all of that bumping. So I rarely recommend this, but it is super expensive. From there, you can see I added another hitch mount right here. Hitches are the most commonly stolen things at campgrounds. So I make sure I put this here, use my hitch pin. So when I do leave my camper at the campground, I have it all nice and locked up and I don't have to leave it attached to the car. One weird thing that it took me a while to figure out is the equalizer does make a lot of noise when you're turning. There are these little plastic tabs that reduce the noise. Moving on up, you can see there are two floodlights in the front and a camera. I have a full surround camera system on all sides as well as floodlights, but we can jump into those when I move inside the cab. All right, starting on this side, I have added a mount over here. This is a grill mount. I use a different kind of grill, not a regular RV grill. I have a grill for my boat in the summer, so I just use those back and forth. I put a mount on this side and the other side in case uh, the wind is blowing and will uh, minimize my effectiveness on my grill. Moving down here, I've also moved my propane outlet from below the frame to through the frame. That way, if I go off-roading, it doesn't rip off the propane attachment. Looking down as well at the stabilizer feet, I, I bought an attachment that you connect to your stabilizer legs that actually help spread the weight of the stabilizer. So if you are in soft ground like this dirt here, it actually doesn't sink in the mud and it creates a nice stable platform. That way you don't have to carry those plastic pads around. 
keep it on the theme of below, I have actually added two more fresh water tanks. I've added a 40 gallon tank right here, another 40 gallon tank, and then there's the, the stock 36 gallon tank right behind me. I'm gonna make detailed videos of those later, so be sure you subscribe. Now let's jump into the basement. As you can see with the basement, I have my general tools here. I have a little ax for cutting up some firewood. Then I have uh, my big ax in case there's a bigger thing I need to cut down. And below there's a handsaw that I've attached. When you go inside, you'll actually see my four lithium, ba lithium ion batteries for my solar system, my 3000 watt inverter generator. And on top of that, inside this compartment here, there's the solar charge controller. It's in a weird spot, but it is Bluetooth, so I can access it from my phone. And then I've also installed a gauge system here where I can monitor the two fresh tanks I've added. Another thing I've done is I've always carry a big fire extinguishers. I have one on this side and the other side, just in case. You never know, these things are a big bonfire waiting to happen and you wanna be safe, so I made sure I upgraded the fire extinguishers. Moving towards the back now, I upgraded the lock to a keypad lock. I hate carrying keys, so this rarely is nice just the locking and unlocking. Even when uh, I'm not using the camper and I wanna get something out of the camper while I'm at home, it's great not to shuffle around looking for the keys. Up top is a removable uh, thermometer. I have a nice screen inside that gives me four areas. I can monitor the temperature. I remove this when I'm traveling but uh, I keep it inside. But when I get to my spot, I just put it here. It's always nice to see the temperature outside. Moving towards the back, since this camper is gonna be sitting all summer and uh, the, the water heater and furnace aren't gonna be using, I made sure I got the insect guard. So nothing actually nests itself inside the water tank and the furnace, definitely a must. Moving back here, I have a shotgun rack. Uh, I do plan on going skeet shooting or hunting. Um, boondocking as well where there could be bears. I just like having the safety of my shotgun where I am. Obviously stick with your local laws if you're allowed to do that. Looking down below I upgraded the tires to the Wild Peak uh, AT3s. These are tires I actually use on all my cars as well so I just wanted something that had a, a better brand recognition than the the ones that came with the tires. I never had uh, with the camper I never had any problems with those I just wanted a bigger name. Looking down below if you guys have micro minis our axles are close together and it's hard to find a, a wheel chalk that actually fits in between them but this x chalk works out perfectly <clears throat> now if you look on up you will see i have a floodlight in the front and the rear and then i also have the camera but that wraps up this side let's move on to the back now guys, if you're new to the channel, I just put out a five part video series of me going around Lake Michigan in extreme cold. I have built this for winter camping. So if you want to see me actually use the camper and the extreme temperatures I did, be sure you check those videos out. Another thing on the bottom that I forgot to mention is I increased the insulation. Normally there's about an eighth inch of coroplast. I went up to a half inch of foam core board and so far it works out great. So now on the back, let's start from the top and work our way down. I have two cameras up top and a floodlight. Camera on the top top is for if I'm going to be traveling in convoy, I can see all the way back and see uh, if uh, I'm losing anyone in my convoy. The camera down below is actually uh, for parking, backing up, it makes life so much easier. Then I've got my floodlight, obviously for night time. Up top here, I have my uh, traction pads. I do go off-roading in this trailer, and if I uh, get stuck, these will just help me um, put some pads under the tires to get more traction to get out of my sticky situation. Down below, I have eight gallons of extra gas. The gas is for my generator as well as my SUV. I tow with the 2020 Ford Expedition, and Depending on how I'm driving, I get about six to seven gallons a mile. So extra gas is a must, especially when you're going off the beaten path. Now down below, something very unique is I have installed the actual hitch, a frame mounted hitch. A lot of controversy out here, but I removed the rear bumper and went into the frame and installed a frame mounted hitch. The reason for that is twofold. One, I have a winch on the rear in case I do get stuck going forwards. I need something to help me pull myself out. 
And if I'm not using the winch, I actually put a 200cc motorcycle on the back. My goal is never to be stuck. My goal is always to be prepared. So I have a motorcycle. If I know I'm going to do off-roading, I will take the motorcycle off, scout the trail, come back, load the motorcycle up, and then go find that perfect uh, boondocking or overlanding spot without the risk of getting stuck. But then again, I also have this winch. It's a 10,000 pound worn winch that can help pull me out if I get stuck. Let's jump on to the other side. Now guys, I am moving pretty fast, so keep in mind I'm going to do detailed videos by category in the following weeks. So stick around for those. I'm just giving you the general overview. So this upgrade I'm going to talk about next is probably the best um, upgrade if you're going to be winter camping and boondocking. If you look down below, I have removed all of my gravity fed dump stations. Now you're gonna say I got a composting toilet. No, I still have a black tank and a gray tank and they are black and gray tanks. The reason I have removed that is because I have installed a macerating pump system. What that is, is a garbage disposal, if you will, like in your kitchen sink, except for your black and your gray. It reduces your pipe size from that three, four inch pipe to a garden hose and it also gives it pressure so let's say i'm camping in the the winter and there's no dump stations open but i do find a porta potty or i find a, a long drop if you will toilet at a state park i can hook up my garden hose pipe and it actually can pump uphill and into the toilet so i can dump out now i'm going to quickly show you how i operate that with a couple switches inside so let's jump in so right inside here, I've installed three separate switches. One switch is a main switch to power the actual pumps. And then the next two switches are the actual pumps. Let me just turn on the gray. As you can hear, um, that's the pump turning on. The reason for the master switch is I want to be conscious enough to know that I'm hitting these pumps on. I don't want uh, my feet to be covered in all of my fertilizer. So that's why I did that. Another upgrade while I'm in here is I added this access panel. Firstly, for the drains, they are right below. And secondly, just because all the wires are back here, so I'd like to access the wire in case something happens. Another good upgrade is a paper towel holder right here. It is a messy job doing uh, the dump, if you will. So be sure you add that. So now moving up to the top, you will notice I actually have my spare tire on the roof. I don't have them on the back. I actually have two spare tires. I put them both on the top of my camper. Now guys, I have over 400 hours building this camper out. I also have 8,000 miles on this camper, off-road, highway, all types of different scenarios. People are going to say that's not safe, that doesn't work. It's all tried and tested. I've had no issues with any upgrade I've done and I've used this camper quite a bit. Another thing on the roof, you'll see I have this antenna. That is the Wii Boost. Obviously, I do YouTube. I love watching YouTube. I need some service when I'm out there. This just helps in case there is weak signal around, I can get some service. Let's move on to the front. All right, guys, same theme continues. I have the floodlights on this side and then I have a camera on the slide. I also installed a slide topper. Slide toppers are a must if you are fall camping or camping where the snow is, or just in general, I would recommend one, but it keeps all the leaves and the dirt debris off the top of your slide if they go in and out. Next up, you can also see I have solar panels on the roof. I have 570 watts of solar, 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. This baby is completely off the grid. I haven't had it plugged into my house in a month and it's still fully functional inside. We'll show you that when I get inside, but let's jump into this side of the basement. Here is the grill mount I mentioned earlier. Then again, I got some bolt cutters every now and then. Uh, people tend to chain up public roads, so I have that. I have my pry bar for my equalizer hitch. And then right up here, I have an actual snow shovel slash dirt shovel. Again, with safety in mind, I make sure I have an extra fire extinguisher. The reason for both sides is if I do see an accident on the highway, obviously I'm driving, I want something easy accessible for me, so I put one on both sides. Well guys, that wraps up the exterior. Let's jump on to the interior so you can see what I've done there. Well guys, I guess I forgot to mention what travel trailer I actually have. I have a Micro Mini 2306 BHS. Absolutely love this floor plan. It has a, a full-size bed and two bunk beds in the back. 
The cool thing about the, the Micro Mini is it is a narrow trailer and that's why I chose it. But definitely I wanted the slide. But let's jump into the interior upgrades. Firstly, I have a Murphy bed setup. So let me show you that. So right here with the Murphy bed, as you know, uh, mattresses in RVs are terrible. I was actually in the mattress industry for eight years. So the first thing I did was upgrade my mattress. If you're looking for a great bargain mattress, the Linen Spar used to be a competitor of mine when I was in the industry. So I hated them at the time, but I love them now because they are good value. Now let's start at the top. I installed a better fan. The stock fans are terrible. This is a max fan. Great for getting air through here. Uh, also removing uh, humidity with winter camping. Moving on to the storage here, I have added a shelf. I do not hang anything as far as clothes when I'm camping. I'm camping, it's not meant to be my house, that's how I use it. So everything is folded and shoved in there. If you look up here, this is the Level Mate Pro. Now, if you move your camper a lot, like daily, I would highly recommend this. This is an app-based system that helps you tell you if your trailer is level left and right and front to back. You turn it on and then you can actually see it from your phone. That way there's no yelling back and forth between you and your partner what is level and what's not. Moving up top here is one of my antennas for my Wii Boost cell phone booster. Uh, you have to have two antennas inside, so one's further in the back and one is up front. If you look down below, there is my GPS mount charger. So that tracks me uh, when I'm traveling, as well as it acts as an emergency cell phone if I'm camping without any service. I can text or call emergency help with that. As well as when my camper is not in use, I leave it in here. Then if it does get stolen, I can track it with that. Down below is my actual camera mount system. Let me turn that on. So this is my camera monitor. I can move back and forth from my car to the camper. When I'm driving, I leave this sitting next to me in the car so I can see all the cameras around. And when I'm uh, in the camper, I leave it next to me so I can see everything that's happening. Down below to keep all of that charging, I installed some outlets to keep everything charged. They do turn off because I am off the grid all the time. I am very conscious about energy. So everything has to have a master kill switch. Not necessarily a battery shut off, but a master kill switch that I can control inside. Another great purchase that I forgot to mention when I'm talking about this fan is this. For winter camping, it is great uh, for insulation, but it is also great because this is a skylight and if you don't want to wake up early, it blocks out the sun. I would highly recommend one of these. Now, if you know winter, winter means a lot of clothes. So I've installed hooks everywhere. These hooks are perfect. They're very heavy duty. They all over the camper. I recommend the hooks. Moving on down, you'll see my shotgun mount. It's actually a lock mount, so it is secured to the wall. I just found this is the best place to put it because it's too long to go in the actual closet. Now let's jump on to the entry area. Alrighty, so this is my control panel that I have installed. Normally, you only have a light switch right here for this light and the awning and the slide outs. I installed a bunch of different switches. Firstly, I've got my key uh, keychain holder right here. This first row are all the floodlights on the exterior. So this would be a master switch, and this is a front, left, back, right, and then I also have spotlights on the underneath of the camper. Uh, I just wanted that in case I get a flat tire at night or in case I'm boondocking and there's animals under there, turn that on. So now the reason for the master switch is they're all on and now I can kill it. Or if I just want uh, the patio lights on, now it's just the patio lights on. So that's why the master switch is there. Moving on up, these are tank heaters. Since I went to camp, I installed five tank heaters. Tank heaters automatically turn on when the temperature is below 45. I don't want that because I use everything on battery here. So there's again a master switch and then fresh tank, fresh tank, fresh tank, gray tank, black tank. That's how I treat everything. Obviously, there's no reason to uh, keep my fresh tanks that are empty warm. So that's why I have these, all these switches separately. Moving on up, this is my awning light. This is my main camera light. So the cameras, again, draw energy, even if you don't have them using. So I just wanted to have a main kill switch. These two are extra, extra ones in case I install extra accessories later. 
Uh, since I use a lot of propane, I installed this wireless propane monitor. Absolutely love it. It uh, is a great investment. Also, it comes with a smartphone app, so you don't have to use these gauges. The rest of the controls are standard. I did change this one light to uh, dimmable uh, because we have kids, they go to bed early. Uh, we like to keep some light in here, but not the full effect of light. Keeping on the door here, I installed this uh, push handle here on the screen. It also helps grab and close the screen door. Rarely like that. For some extra security, since we always camp <laughs> at off season, I installed some uh, household uh, bear spray, if you will, right by the door in case we need it. And then a paper towel holder, which everyone needs some paper towels. So let's jump into the kitchen. All right, now that we're in the kitchen, let's just go over my solar power setup here. As I mentioned earlier, I have 570 watts of solar, 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. Up top here is a Victron battery monitor. Right now I have 84%. I've had uh, the inverter on um, for the last two weeks. And you know, today is a cloudy day, but I still have 100% power in here at 84% battery. This is my inverter controller charger, so I can turn the inverter off. Uh, I probably should leave it off. And then up here, batteries don't like working in the cold. So again, this is another battery uh, heater. Master switch and then the heating pad. Here is the weather gauge or the temperature monitor that I talked about earlier. I have a bunch of these uh, monitors that I keep in the basement or wherever I want them. That way I can monitor the temperature whenever I need to. Coming down to the sink area. Uh, this is a great little addition. Mine didn't come with this. I saw some campers did. Uh, I had just had to cut these poles down with a pipe cutter so it fits perfectly on my sink. Great way to dry your dishes. Since we do not know the quality of our water all the time, I filter our water at least four times before drinking it. A filter at the actual uh, faucet. Then I have a triple filter system right here and our drinking water comes right here. It, it's a great system. It removes even the irony taste from water when you in the bushes, I guess. So I highly recommend installing that. Let's jump into the pantry right now. Firstly, we love cooking. Uh, so we have all our spices up top. Then we also have all of our actual uh, storage for our pantry. These things are great. Our pantry uh, doesn't move around that much. These are the things we just don't take in and out of the camper when we're not using it. Love this setup. So when you enter into the bottom of the sink, all my triple filtration is in the back there. And then I install this quick little protein uh, bar snack tray here. Love this little thing. It doesn't take up any space, but you gain extra room. Alrighty, back here is our TV station. What I have done is this is the main power switch for the WeBoost system and then just an additional uh, switch in case I add anything. Inside here is where I keep the separate modem. The TV is standard with my camper, but behind the TV there's some storage, so that's where I keep my walkie-talkies in case we go hiking or in case I need to talk to my wife while traveling down a trail. She can help me out there. As I mentioned uh, with fire extinguishers, I increased the size of the fire extinguisher at the door and I added one in the rear. Since my kids are sleeping separate from me, uh, I need to be able to access a fire extinguisher wherever I am. I know it's a small space. I'm just a nut for safety. So down below, I installed another fire extinguisher. Again, here are some more hooks, some keychain hooks, some uh, hooks for my kids stuff. But let's go closer to the back where I'm gonna actually remove you guys from the tripod because it's very tight back here. So moving on back to the bunkhouse. If you guys have a Winnebago uh, with the bunkhouse, you'll know this is a problem. They put the thermostat right where every child knocks it and knocks the screen off or even changes the temperature. So I put one of these boxes here just to prevent that. Up top, I put another carbon monoxide sensor. There is one already with the camper, but I just installed another one in the rear just because. In each one of my kids' beds, I installed this little vanity, if you will, so they can have their knickknacks when they are traveling. I installed a little USB fan for them as well. And then back here, we have a whiteboard to keep them busy when they wake up at 5 a.m. and I don't want to wake up. I didn't feel like putting a ladder here for my daughter to climb up, so I just got one of these rock climbing mounts, screwed that to the wall. That really helps her climb in. Now in the bathroom, I upgraded the toilet to a porcelain uh, domatic 
320. I had to cut out the back there. I still need to figure out how to clean that up, but this is a must. Uh, those other toilets sound like they're going to explode whenever you look at them. And also the elongated bowl makes it feel like you're at home. Back here, I installed as well uh, an Oxygenics Body Spa shower head to save on water consumption, a soap uh, dispenser, and then a toilet uh, roll holder. Other than that, everything else is stuck in the back. Now, one thing I didn't show you is down below, I have the three water tanks that I mentioned, but they are all separate in case one gets contaminated or in case I need to just drain the front one first and work my way back and so on. Um, this is not a tidy system right now, but it is a working system. So I want to show you what it looks like. So this is how I control it. There's three separate intakes, front, middle, rear tank. That way I can choose which tank to drain from. I normally drain from the front tank first, moving uh, the weight to the back of the camper as far as the hitch weight. I did install a bigger pump because these are self-priming pumps uh, it, and these are far away tanks. I needed a bigger pump for that. And then I've also kept all the winterizing hoses. Well guys, those are all the upgrades I've done to my travel trailer. Hopefully some of these are giving you ideas of what you want to do to your camper. But if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll answer all of them. And if you're looking for any of these products specifically, again, there's a link down below that will take you to all these products to help you figure out what you want to buy. Now, until next time, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. I will be doing detailed videos on all the installs and how I installed them. But if you leave comments down below as far as what you would like to see first or next, let me know and I'll prioritize them that way. But thanks a lot for stopping by and until next time, I'll see you then.